Hello everyone, my name is Angel Mazingo and today we are reading The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, which is written by John Siska and illustrated by Lane Smith. This book is being read with permission from Puffin Books. So this was one of my favorite stories when I was younger because it told a tale I had already known but from a different perspective. So as we read, I want you to think about how there might be more to a story than what we already know and ask yourself how seeing different perspectives might change how you see the story. So based on this picture right here on the cover, whose perspective do you think this story is being told from? The wolf's, right? This is told from the wolf's perspective, which is interesting because if you know the story of the three little pigs, you know the wolf is normally seen as the bad guy. So let's read on and see what the wolf thinks is the true story. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do, but I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies, sheep, and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, Folks would probably think you're big and bad, too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real snor story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So if we think about how the wolf is shown in the original story of the Three Little Pigs, would we picture him as someone who's making a birthday cake for his dear old granny? Probably not, because we don't normally think of that as something a bad guy would do. And then there's him. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now the neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone's house. So I called, little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming in. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw, was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just laying there. So based on what you just read about why the wolf came to the house and how the house wound up being blown down, does that change how you see the wolf at all? Because in the original story, the wolf, you know, forced his way in and purposely blew down the house. But from the wolf's perspective, he said it was all an accident caused by a sneeze while he was trying to ask his neighbor for sugar. But let's continue and see what happens from there. I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hair on my chinny chin chin. 
I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail, wolf's honor. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? And you know what? That rude little porker answered. Get out of here, wolf. Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably would have had a sack full of sugar. And he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear, sweet, old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday cake card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I sneezed once again and the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pen. Oh no, the third little pig just insulted the wolf's granny. How do you think the wolf's gonna react to that? Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down the pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. And the rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the whole story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. That's the real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? So the wolf said that they jazzed up his story to make it more exciting and that he was framed. Did your opinion of the wolf change throughout the story based on all of that? Or do you still have a hard time believing what the wolf's saying? Well, at the end of that story, I am going to leave you with one final question. Are there any stories that you've read where if the story was told from the bad guy's perspective, it might change how you or others view the story. You can leave your thoughts in the comments below, or you can even write your own little story from what's normally seen as the bad guy's perspective. Like you can write the Beauty and the Beast from Gaston's perspective or something like that. And I want to thank Puffin Books once again for letting us read this story, and I hope you all have an amazing day.